Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of... Kero. My name is Hans. I'm Edward. And we are your hosts for now and forevermore. <laughs> or until one of us just drifts away. Or rather, until, sleep land. until one of us comes back in a virtual concert. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have more on that a little bit later in the episode, assuming, of course, I even remember to bring it up. Because uh, I remember last week that I said something and we never came back around to the topic. <laughs> That's how good. Listen, um, life is amazing at the moment. Okay. If you are new to Gettle, welcome to one of the internet's premier locations for gaming, entertainment, technology, and lifestyle, news, reviews, previews, and excellent discussion all wrapped up in a wonderful geeky roasted pecan package oh i like nuts you're allergic though yeah. so that's a, a bit of a weird one for you I am allergic, to be suggesting I love nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm sure you do uh, well that may yeah okay fine um, <laughs> to our regular listeners welcome back get lights lovely to have you with us as always so, Ed, yeah, how you be doing this week? A little bit better, actually. Um, things are quieting down, <clears throat> getting, getting figured out. I guess is is the term. <laughs> um, I'm awake, actually, <laughs> for, for a change. change. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But not even a headache in sight. So that's that's a good thing. Let's not jinx that. What about you? So I am generally okay, I'd like to say. Um, as most of you know, our family came down with um, with COVID. And so, you know, it's been it's been really difficult. Um, like, if I really must be honest about it. Um, it's been very challenging. The folks have been hit quite hard by it. I just sailed through it because I've been vaccinated. At least one of the two vaccines, as I've mentioned before. They, they seem to be through what I'm hoping is the worst of it. Um, but there is something called long COVID, which I'm, I think of all of the members of our household, my mom, unfortunately has been the most impacted. So we'll see. Um, we'll see how it goes, Ed and our listeners. Mm. We're hoping for the best, honestly. <laughs> it is, it is very difficult. Like last night, I don't want to share too much, but it was a very difficult night for all of us just in terms of helping them and that, because it was just, you know, there's good days and bad days and this virus is just it's horrible um i can imagine <clears throat> okay moving on to a better light-hearted because if it just <laughs> okay <laughs> it's always like downers now like every episode <laughs> i was gonna say long covid sounds like a movie oh please we don't need more of these like uh, you know covid related later sequel or something or, or, or rather like for those of you who are watching the video you'll you'll you might notice that my nose is severely red um, this is not because of the fact that I've been blowing it or anything. I, I just, for whatever reason, I think it's all the masks I've been wearing. So like, for whatever reason, I have a bit of a, like really bad, like zit that's kind of forming there and it's just so painful. So there we go. That's it. Like Rudolph, the red nosed reindeer, this is the wrong <laughs> yes. time of the year, you know? Um, <laughs> um, what, what Christmas in July, but more like August. Yeah. More like, or, or September actually. Oh gosh, yeah. can you believe it? Oh. September already. Happy Spring Day, y'all. If it's yeah, been happy, yeah, yeah. I hope it has for most of you. Uh, once yeah. again, apologies if I end up uh, coughing a little bit or whatever through the episode. I am getting, I'm a lot better than I was even last week, but it still persists. Anyway, um, so we're going to go straight on to our question of the week. Um, this one. So Edward and I, we previously asked in, I think it was episode... 60 something we we asked you know if you could live in a movie you know what movie would it be and who would you who would you want to be like if 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 you could have a choice so not to keep it in the same vein from a question perspective um but just from an interest perspective more so what video game franchise would you wish to live in if you were given the option you know, and I know that it's, it's kind of similar, but at the same time, it's not similar because, you know, video games are different in the sense of 
you know, a movie, if you, if, if you like, we, we previously discussed how if you're an NPC in a movie, you could probably just live, live your life. And as long as it's not a disaster movie, nothing's ever going to happen. <laughs> now, video games are a little bit different because I actually pitched this question earlier this week to a cousin of mine and he was like, The Sims. And I was like, yeah, that's all fun and well until your creator removes all the doors from your room and kills you. Or all the <laughs> all the, the things to get out of the pool, you know? <laughs> well, to be fair <clears throat> on that one, the creator... Your creator can still decide to do that, I guess, even if you're well, I in mean, real life. I, 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 uh, okay, yes, okay, <laughs> fine. Fair enough, fair enough. So There are so, rules, though, to be fair. So let's go with that being the question, right? So the okay. question is, if you could choose any singular world or franchise available within a video game, which would you choose to live out the rest of your days and why? And bear in mind... Much like the movie question, it, you don't have to be the protagonist in the situation. You could just be someone in the world, you know? So, like, if it was The Sims, you just hope and pray you're one of the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just one of those that you talk to him is just... And then you, the you Sim don't, don't, don't get, you know, don't marry into the family, you know? Like, yeah. Any, any family that has the, the, the green crystal thing is above their heads, you stay away from. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Ed, well, I just, I just have curiosity. I, I know it's a bit of a, a difficult one to answer, actually. So I, I will think about my answer while you answer. <laughs> it's it's actually strange that you mentioned The Sims because I've actually been playing a little bit of The Sims. Now, not to play it, but I actually use The Sims to plan out whenever I want to move my, my furniture around. That's what I use The Sims for. Um, and I have actually Whoa. been like tinker tonkering. <laughs> this is for, like, uh, hey everyone, days. Edward's living in the year three thousand here. Okay, that's what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> that's what I do. Um, it, it gives you a good, yeah, a good you, idea you're, of how you're to kind of yourself. spot on. I never ever thought of doing that. That's actually like pretty genius. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. Everyone who knows me knows that I love to move everything around, and I like to change my wallpapers. I change a lot of things in my life constantly. No, you don't. Um, I do, <laughs> actually. Hey, hey, uh, rather, hey, hey. not things I do, uh, but uh, things around okay. me. Because I distinctly remember the one time suggesting mm. that certain things yeah. should be moved around and you were like, I'm not doing that. And I was like, but it would make your life easier. And I'm not doing that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends. It depends. But, but ah, things like ah. furniture <laughs> and wallpapers and, and stuff like that, I constantly move. Anyway. Okay, fair enough. Um, but not The Sims. I'm not going to choose The Sims. <laughs> okay. I am going to choose Assassin's Creed. Oh, okay. that's an, that is an interesting choice. Um, mainly because I would hope to be not a part of any of the Templar or <laughs> Assassin's bullshit <laughs> and just be a member of society. You just want to be caught um, in a fight, right? So, so, so I, I just want to <laughs> I just want to look down my my tiny ass, you know, the, those balconies in Victorian England. <laughs> uh, I just want to look down at it and see some brawl going on in the so, street so and just on. scream at them. Which Assassin's Creed? <laughs> Syndicate. <coughs> ah, okay. You did say London, so I, but I had to just yeah. you know, confirm there for a second. Yeah, okay, it's, it's one of the periods that I that I love the most of, like all of them that's been covered. I mean, obviously, I am biased towards Greece and Rome, but that, yes. I don't want to live there. Because life expectancy back then was <laughs> low. <laughs> I'd rather I, go to, to London. Okay, that's... Yeah. Very, that's the, the, a cool, interesting choice of franchise, okay? You know, it, it's funny you would say that because my answer is actually also quite similar. It's not Assassin's Creed, but I mm -hmm. was thinking more along the lines of living in the world of like um, Uncharted or Tomb Raider. But what? only because I wouldn't be the protagonist. So I would just be yes. in the world living my life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I would hear of Lara Croft probably on the radio, you know. Exactly. Like like following these euros uh, uh, through the paper or through our um, news networks or whatever. That would be amazing. Like knowing they're around. Well, it would certainly but be I different, would, you know. I would honestly not want to be one of them. Yeah. Maybe I Nathan mean, Drake. Maybe Nathan Drake. I don't know. Maybe, 
but nah. I don't know because nah. It, so, okay, okay, okay. Fine, fine. So we've we, we've we've spoken about the world we would live in, right? Let's expand a little bit on the question because otherwise that's just so PC. We're so vanilla. The two of us. <laughs> I know. We're so <laughs> safe. <laughs> now pick pick being a protagonist in a video game. Like, which would you choose if to live you the rest of your life out as, you um, know? See, <laughs> okay, okay. Knowing that <laughs> imminent death is around any corner, <laughs> probably something like, <clears throat> nah, nah, nah. Come on, what, no, no, what was it, what was it, what was it? What was it in the tip of your tongue? What my, was it? my immediate thought was Commander Shepard in Mass Effect. Oh, but come on, that's amazing. The you, thing is, I know for a fact I wouldn't be able to to do what he does. Why? Because I'm not, I don't have the kind of courage. Don't sell yourself so short. Who no. knows? Who knows? I maybe know maybe if you were in that situation, you, you would be able to take control. If I would be a commander of a ship <laughs> flying... <laughs> I think realistically, knowing my limits, um, I would go back again to Assassin's Creed and choose Edward Kenway and oh, that's Assassin's cool. Creed 4. Because being a pirate is a lot different than being, mm. you know, a man faced with saving the universe, you know, in the galaxy. Yes, yes, yes. That's my choice. Okay, yeah. that's very interesting. So... Off the top oh. of my head. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah? and his name is Edward. <laughs> so there's oh, so, yeah, so it, 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 you have that going for you as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Edward Kenway, Edward Swart, you know. There we go. Um, love child of so-and-so, right? Because that's technically how his story goes or something. He's like love illegitimate. Love child of... Uh, he, no, he's the, the grandfather of... So yeah, he's Edward, the grandfather we, of, of We've mentioned it before in previous I episodes, think. but Edward did the most incredible know. Assassin's Creed um, sort of uh, like expose, retrospective. So we'll we'll possibly link to it. I'll uh, in terms of question of the week, that'll be the link that I'll I'll add to it. Hmm. So for me, I think I think this is just because it's very hot right now. This is the the hot topic, and I've just ordered a limited edition console and controller. I think I would be Petty Officer John One One Seven Master Chief from ha- Master Chief. Yeah, I think I think that would be super cool. Um, more so because I've always been fascinated by the universe, and I've always wanted to know more about the Forerunners and uh, you know the Ring things that they don't necessarily answer enough. So I would like to imagine that if I was Master Chief, I would be able to find out these things, you know, go on these quests, find Cortana, you know, help her because they, you save her from rampancy or whatever the fong happened to her at the end of Halo 5, you know. Um, I think that would be it. Also, he's like super buff and tall. So like, hey, you know, fits the profile. <laughs> <laughs> super buff and tall. Ladies and gentlemen, we have it recorded. We're going to have Hans thinks he's super buff and tall. And no, I think that's, that's not what I said. Because that's in, not the pri- <laughs> in our private chats, he always thinks he's fat or not tall or, or thin or... Can you, know, you not be sharing short. my body dysmorphia on the podcast? No, I'm glad. I'm glad you, you, you said you want to be John, Petty Officer John, because... You look like him, and I think that's amazing. Well, uh, okay. that's a good thank you, Edward. Thing, I will okay? take it. I will take it. Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> take what you're, what, you're, what you're throwing out here. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I think that would be it. Uh, you know, I know that Halo has some, you know, like the flood is super scary and stuff like that, but I think it's such an incredible universe. And I, I am rather excited for Halo Infinite, which is finally coming out at the end of the year. Mm. Um, and for those who don't know, it will be free on Game Pass, as with all of Microsoft's first party titles. Now, Edward and I have spoken about Xbox Game Pass many, many times. And this is purely because it is the best subscription service currently available for gamers. It just is. You know, yes, you know, there's Uplay Plus and, you know, EA has Origin and blah, blah, blah. But but the biggest, most expansive is 100% Game Pass, including feature-wise. <clears throat> so... You know, in addition to being able to download local copies of the games to your your console and play them, they've also, you know, been rolling out over the last couple of months the over the air, right? Uh, what's it? The streaming the streaming version of 
what well, used to be called X Cloud, um, but now it's just part of Game Pass Ultimate. Xbox Cloud Gaming. Yeah, Xbox Cloud Gaming. Gosh, Microsoft and their names, honestly. Anyway, yeah, but so <laughs> Xbox Cloud Gaming is now part of, of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And the cool thing about that is if you're in a supported region, you could use um, any mobile device and paired with the controller of your choice, even a PlayStation controller, and you can play your Xbox games in the cloud as long as you've got the, enough bandwidth. Now, the reason why we're bringing this up more so... Uh, you know, Game Pass <coughs> and how all of Microsoft's games, first party games come out on the service is because once again, once again, and I will put this on record, PlayStation is screwing their audience and their, uh, you know, well, audience is the word, right? Their, their, their player base. Because Microsoft announced something called Smart Delivery. All the way back, I think it was in, was it 2019, 2020? They, when mm. they said that they were working on the new, the new machines, right? And they said that oh, yeah, smart yeah. delivery would be this whole concept of, it doesn't matter which Xbox you have. Um, if the game is supported on that Xbox, you would buy it once and your version of that game would download to whatever Xbox console you've got. So in this scenario, let's take Halo Infinite, which is coming out, right? It's yeah. cross-platform across the, across Xbox One and the series consoles. Now, as long as you've got Game Pass, you can download your version of the game on whatever console you own. So if you have an Xbox One in the lounge and an Xbox Series X in your bedroom, they will get their relevant versions, meaning that the Xbox One will get its version and the Xbox Series X will have its version, you know, with the 4K textures and high resolution and better fidelity graphics. And the saves would also just work across both platforms. You don't even have to think about yeah. it. Now, when all of that was announced and when Microsoft spoke about it, people gave Microsoft a lot of flack. They were like, um, you know, this is so stupid. Like, how is this any different to what we already have? Now, this is where the interesting part comes in because everyone was like, oh, it's already there. But what many people don't realize is this actually took years for Microsoft to develop. This wasn't just a simple s switch to flick up, uh, you know, on and off because fundamentally the machines are different. They might use Xbox Live as the base backend, but the machines are fundamentally different. So the way that they process save games and save data and, you know, visual data and so on and so forth is different. So smart delivery is a very, it's actually quite an, um, quite a cool concept. And we, I, I will link to how they explain it, um, you know, so you can go and read up a bit more about it. And the reason why I'm speaking about this right now is because once again, the for the players uh, company, which is Sony and PlayStation, have just like when they announced that they were going to increase the cost of their games, which Microsoft is not doing, by the way, just once again saying, they, have, they are now making it even more difficult and confusing to upgrade your games that you've bought on PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5. Now, understand... PlayStation 5 is backwards compatible to PlayStation 4. Okay, we know this. However, ever since PS5 came out, there has been a consistent issue and problem with A, getting saves across. Basically, what you've got to do is you have to download the PS4 version of the game, then download your save game, then upload your save game, then download the PlayStation 5 version of the game, which has some sort of save transfer feature to then bring it over. And that's if it has the feature. And that's if it's got the feature. Do you know what you have to do on Xbox? You turn off the game on your Xbox One and you turn it on on your Series X. That's it. It will automatically sync and there's nothing for you to do. So, <clears throat> again, I'm bringing it up because right now, they've Sony have once again done something so ludicrous that you just look at this and you're like, how did the forerunners of the previous generation fall so far down now with the next generation, with the PlayStation 5? Because... The, the latest debacle has to do with Her, um, Horizon Forbidden West, which is the newest game coming out. I think either the end of 2021 or it might have been delayed to 2022. I think it was delayed. February. Either way, either yeah. way, it's, it's the latest one, all right? They've now made it so that if you buy the standard version of the game on PlayStation 4, there is no upgrade path to PlayStation 5. Not even an offer. Not even an offer. So where other games like Final Fantasy had like, I think it was like a $10 upgrade or there was one or two other games that had like a $10 upgrade where you could then upgrade to the PlayStation 5 version of the game. For this one, there isn't, unfortunately. 
And yeah. it's just like, why? W- what are you doing, Sony? Like, not everybody has the money to afford the special edition or the higher version, uh, you know, collector's edition of the game. Some people have the, just enough for for the standard version. For the one. Yeah. The worst part of this all is that if you, let's say you only, you have limited funds available and you think, okay, fine, I'll buy the PS5 version because mm. I might get a PS5 in at Christmas. You still won't be able to play it on the PS4 then because they are fundamentally different versions. Correct. Correct. On but top bear in mind, that, that's just for the standard one. That's just for the standard one. Yes. Yeah. On top of this, that, yeah. Um, if you... Oh, no, now I lost my train of thought. Look, they call it dual entitlement. Oh, yes. That's, that's um, the, the... Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah it's, it's stupid. stupid. Um, on top of that, they do market it as the PS4 version does have an upgrade path, but that is only if you buy the, the more expensive deluxe version. You if see, you buy the standard version, you don't have an option of an upgrade, upgrade path at all. That is so shady because yeah. th- when they announced Horizon Forbidden West, from yeah. the beginning, hey, from the very beginning that the game was announced, they said available on both with an upgrade path. Nowhere yes. did it say that that upgrade path would be locked behind higher paywalls for other editions of the game. And mm-hmm. that is just such a F you from Sony yep. to their audience, their massive PlayStation 4 audience, and now assuming PlayStation 5. Like, why would you do that when your biggest competitor, which is Microsoft and Xbox in this situation, is literally handing out stuff for free. Like, here's a really, really great example, okay? Horizon Forbidden West is going to be priced at what? I think 1,200 Rand or something? It's it's, um, it's what? It's $60. I think yeah, it's 5999 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is, and I stand to be corrected, but almost a full year of Game Pass, okay? Just, just to put it into perspective, right? So let's take... Halo Infinite releasing at the end of the year, or even uh, Forza Horizon 5, which is coming. These are first party ex- uh, exclusives and major titles. For one year of Game Pass, you could get all of that for free versus buying the game, you know, outright. Sony yeah. doesn't have that as an offering. Rather, they're just like, no, you got to pay, and you got to pay more if you want the dual entitlement version. So, like, like, you just look at this, it boggles the mind. It just, you know, because first of all, Sony doesn't have anything to match that. They have PlayStation Now, which I see Final Fantasy is now coming to it. So that's their big draw card at the moment. But the service is nowhere near as mature or fully functional as Game Pass. It, anyway, it just it's just, I don't sucks. know. I am disappointed as a PlayStation gamer. I really, really am. And, you know, this is not the first time they did this. So recently, and now, now again, I don't know if this is a Sony decision or if this was a Square Enix decision, but they recently gave Final Fantasy VII Remake, or was it Remaster? Uh, 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 the name. Anyway, remake. Remake, yeah. Remake. They gave Remake away on PlayStation Plus. However, however, this is the big one. This is the, this is the thing to note. It was only the PlayStation 4 version. So even if you downloaded it on your play, if you, if you claimed that at all, it is only the PlayStation 4 version of the game with no upgrade path, zero upgrade path, because it was free via PlayStation Plus. And the yep. danger with that, which a lot of people actually fell into, is many of them actually already owned the game. Now, if you had previously bought the game, there is an upgrade path to PlayStation 5. You're going to pay for it, though. I think it's like $10 or $15 yeah, or whatever the 15 case is. 15 bucks, and then you get also get the expansion. Yes, you get the, 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 the is it Yuffie, or I forgot yes. her name. Yeah, yeah, the Yuffie, the Yuffie yeah. DLC, yeah. But the thing is, if you had bought the game and then you claimed the PlayStation Plus version, it actually overwrote your previous one. Did you know that? I didn't. I thought there it was, was a separate h- entity. No, there was a huge library. thing about it where, where, where people were actually advised not to claim it if they already owned the game. Because if they That's did, it, 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 if they did, it would lock their version of the game to PlayStation 4 only. It's, you know, it's just crazy to think about it because... You know, Edward and I have had a really interesting discussion last year about um, PlayStation's DRM and how, you know, they made fun of it for the Xbox One and blah, blah, blah. But a lot of evidence came out over the years to showcase how Sony had exactly the same thing in place. But because Microsoft announced it first, they quickly backtracked. 
And yeah. what is interesting about that is so much of the operating system, including the one on the PlayStation 5, is geared towards DRM. And yeah. one of the major indicators of that is how you cannot copy a game. It doesn't matter what you do, you cannot copy. You can only move to move games. And <clears throat> for Edward Nine, as we've mentioned before many times, the issue comes in like, you know, because we do reviews and often we only get one code and most of the time it's digital. So we claim it on one account, basically, that we then share the, the, the details of because otherwise how else are we supposed to do this? Um, yeah. And the issue with that comes into the point of where previously when Edward didn't have good internet, I would have to download it. And then the issue would be then if I was also meant to possibly play it with him or give him insight, you know, because we, we work together on these things, I would then have to re-download the game. That's just how yes. PlayStation functions. Anyway. It's literally, um, when you copy it, over, so, so for context, when you copy a game over to an external hard drive um, on PlayStation, it doesn't copy the game, it moves the game. Yeah. There is yeah, yeah. no option to have multiple copies of the game on a console on if you are a PlayStation owner. So I would give Mans, Mans my external hard drive. He would give me the game that he copied from his main console. And then it would vanish from his console. From in, my system, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And also, um, to, to add on top of that, if you have a disc version of the game and your friend has a digital version of the game, the two are not compatible. Yep. I yep. cannot download the game <laughs> for, let's say, uh, well, let's say Hans. Let's say I'm downloading the game for him because I have a digital version and he bought bought it and he doesn't the have physical, the physical. Yeah, yeah. The PlayStation would not allow you to play the game. It's um, just, even if you have the disc insert. You know, all of that, like I said, is DRM. That's yeah, pure DRM. That's the, the, the fact that. The digital downloaded copy on the machine won't work with a disc in it or that it's somehow fundamentally different. It's just such a, it boggles the mind as to who thought that was a good idea. It literally makes zero sense. Whereas yeah. on Xbox, you can, I, can, I can copy as much as I want. And in fact, in fact, if I knew, so I, I've, I've been all digital for years now, for almost, uh, almost a decade, all right, in terms of the consoles and that. But if there was ever a time where I needed to get a disc for something, I can actually, and Xbox allows this, preload the full game on my machine so that when I go and pick up the disc or the disc gets delivered, I just put it in and boom, I can play it immediately. And, or yep. alternatively, if I felt like I don't want the disc anymore or I want to sell the disc, I can then buy, I, I can just go into the store and buy a license and boom, the game that is already on my system will just work. On PlayStation, you cannot do that. If you, if you go and buy the digital version of a game that you already have on disc, it's a whole new download. It's a whole new process and you can't copy anything. Now, I know we're talking about a lot of grievances here, but like the biggest issue that we really want to speak about at this moment in time is what is Sony doing? What are you doing? Why are you charging so much more for your audience to have things when your competitors are not doing it? You know? It's, you know what it is? It's hubris. Uh, yeah, I think... You know, well. they're the market leader. PlayStation 5 is constantly outselling. So we're going we're gonna to screw the audience for as much as we can. And that is literally what's happening. Literally. Yep. If, for instance, now, um, I, I brought up an, a post from The Verge explaining the whole Horizon thing, okay? And I'm just going to quote a, a small paragraph with the prices now. Now, it says, to get both the PS4 and PS5 digital versions of Horizon Forbidden West in a single package, okay, because they are not the same game, you have to buy the spendier $80 digital deluxe edition, okay, because then you get both games. Now, that's already $10 more than the normal price for a next-gen game. Okay. Jeez. Or the $200 collector's edition or the $250 regalia edition, which I think is just with the statue. Um, in contrast... The standard edition of either will cost will cost you sixty bucks or seventy bucks. So that's if you only want to buy the one single Wait, version. Are you serious? Do you yes. hold hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on? The mm -hmm. exact identical game for yeah. PlayStation Four is ten dollars cheaper than the PlayStation Five version. Yes. Yes. Look, I know we've um, spoken about that increase, and I, I'm. It's very sad to see that Sony is now normalizing it because exactly. it's bullshit. So this means that if you want again to buy the PS5 version because you you might be getting one for Christmas, 
you have to at least um, shell out 70 bucks. 70 At the very least. Oh, um, that's that's even worse than I originally thought. Yep. So, you, so, but, you, so hold on. Wait. So it's $60 for PlayStation 4 standard, $70 yes. for PlayStation 5 standard, $80 yep. for the PS4 for, and PS5 dual entitlement version. Yes. Why would you but need to it, pay $20 more? It gets, uh, oh. it, it gets more confusing, Hans. Okay, so listen to this. There is also a special edition for PS4 only that costs $70. Okay? And a version for PS5 which costs $80. So, in other words, there is an $80 digital deluxe edition which gives you both games. There is an $80 special edition for PS5 (coughs) which only gives you the one game. Okay. There is a $60 PS5 game only. There is a sixty dollars special edition PS4 game only. It's well, hold on, hold on, hold on. The eighty dollars dual entitlement is that for the standard version? That's the digital deluxe edition, which gives you both standard versions of the game. Okay, yes. but how does that differ to the digital deluxe on PS4? The digital deluxe on PS4 only will give you the mini, the soundtrack, the mini art. No, no, but I mean, but I mean, <laughs> <of case. coughs> no dual entitlement. No. No deal. No, man. This is this this is bullshit. Okay. This is this outright is bullshit. This shouldn't even be happening. Why on earth Sony had to even write a blog post explaining the differences, and now the media have to pick up on it and trying to explain it to the public is ludicrous. This is this and, and shouldn't worst, even be a thing. And I when, while I'm reading this, I'm just thinking of all the the older people out there and the less tech savvy people. Let's say you have a girlfriend and your girlfriend wants to surprise you for Christmas, she's going to GameStop or wherever to buy you an upcoming cool game. She wouldn't know what the hell to buy. Let's say you only have a PS4 and she buys the PS5 standard edition or special edition. You know what? Even you just, even just what you've said now, like, like I can imagine parents, anybody, yes, anybody who's not a gamer, who is in, who is interested in reading up about games, right? Let's assume somebody's mm-hmm. super casual. Ta- mm-hmm. Take a young person, for example. Take some 16-year-old who played the original Horizon on their PS4, and then they got a PS5 throughout the course of this year for birthday, Christmas, or whatever. Now, at the end of the year, the parents are like, what would you like? And they're like, oh, I want, a, for, um, I want a, uh, Horizon Forbidden West. So then you, the parents go out and buy the wrong version. Because yes. for them, PlayStation is PlayStation. What's the difference? Exactly. They see special edition or deluxe edition, or just, oh, they just man. buy it. No, Obviously, rather, but no, rather it the, also. The seventy it's, bucks it's... special edition versus the eighty bucks special edition. They'll get you the sixty bucks one because they're both special edition. Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to say. Why? Why should we spend another ten or twenty dollars? No, man. Yeah. This is this is this this be some BS. Mm-mm. I'm very. I'm not happy it's about bullshit. this at all. Yeah. Um, and I think that first of all. The fact that they actually made fun of Xbox's smart delivery, which is now proving to be absolutely incredible this year, is was the first knock. The second knock is the fact that they want to charge more for next-gen games, which Microsoft is not even doing. And the third knock now is that they're purposefully screwing their customer base and making it confusing, as if it wasn't yeah. already a mission enough to transfer save to save games. No, man. Oh, on the topic of save games as well, um, on <coughs> PlayStation, uh, on Xbox, you have free save game cloud storage whether you are um, xbox live member or not on playstation you only get cloud storage if you are a playstation PlayStation plus Plus. subscriber yeah in other words in order to transfer your save game let's say you do buy the ps4 standard knowing you'll buy the ps5 standard later and you do transfer your save games you'll only be able to do so via the cloud if you pay an extra 30 Uh, uh, 30 are you sure they they didn't change that is it as far as i know because i lost Uh. my that's how I lost my God of War save. Oh man, that sucks. So, Jeez. Yep. It was almost a perfect save as well. <laughs> so, so. That's terrible. You see, you see, but you yep. see, things like this shouldn't be the case. It should be, mm-hmm. you know, it should be seamless, which is what Microsoft have gone for. You can, you yep. know, you, people can say what they want. The Xbox platform really is the better one. You, you know, you can argue games and exclusive blah, 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 but from a perspective of making things easy for you to do, it is the obvious choice which system is the better of the two. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's assume it was Xbox and, and the, a game was coming out at the end of the year, Forza, Halo, whatever. 
a, a kid or a partner or whatever could just tell their, their significant other, just buy me a game pass, buy me a game pass sub. Boom. Get me three months of it or a full year yeah. if you want, because A, it's going to cost you the same as if you had to buy one single AAA title, except now I get a year of it and I get all the titles that get released within that year. It's like a no brainer. Yeah. And even if you don't have internet and you get just a hard copy of Halo Infinite, let's say, you can rest assured that you'll be able to play that on just about any Microsoft console post Oh, even PC, hey, don't forget. PC as well. And on PC, because yeah, it's that's, that's anywhere. The, yeah, yeah that, that's the, the, the probably one of the best aspects of Game Pass, actually, is how mm-hmm. it's mobile, PC, and console. Exactly. It's uh, really something special, honestly. <sighs> kind of like ABBA coming back. <laughs> hey? <laughs> that's <laughs> a hard shift, but yes. No, okay, yeah, sure, sure, it's a hard <laughs> shift. It's a hard shift. But, like, this really did come out of the blue, though. Um, mm. uh, you know... Anyone who, I, I don't know what the demographics of our audience are. I kind of feel they might be a little bit young for talking about ABBA. I mean, even we're too young to be speaking about ABBA, to be perfectly frank. I mean, it's Listen, more like our parents ABBA, and older. So yeah, but okay, yeah, so probably we knew we know of ABBA because our parents though, listened to it, you know? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the, the news is they're coming back, right? Yes, um, literally out of the blue, they're, they are releasing a new album later this year. Um but what intrigued me the most, okay, so so I'm li- I listen to a lot of Apple music. And I was listening to, to Beats One the other day, which is the Apple radio. I think they renamed it recently. And suddenly there was an interview <coughs> with Bjorn, I forgot his last name, with the, the, the one guy from ABBA. Okay. And he was speaking about how they are doing a digital concert. Now, this got me excited, like... ABBA doing a digital concert, <laughs> okay, that's number one exciting. And in the interview with, with Zane Lowe, they explained that they are using industry industry light and magic oh. technology. Now, ILM. we wow. have spoken about this yeah. tech before, Hans. Yes, we have. Specifically when we spoke about The Mandalorian. Yes, um, yes. And Unreal exactly, Engine. And, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so basically, uh, for for the for those who don't know, ILM is made by George Lucas. Um, it, the co- it's a sub company he owns called ILM. Um, I'm curious. And it's are actually, they owned by Disney now as well? Hey, I or, or is it still don't separate? Know. I I would think it's owned by Disney because a lot of the movies this technology uses Dis- are Disney movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, okay. A lot of them. Many of them are Sony Pictures as well. Um, mm-hmm. So. Um, f- yeah, f- some of these movies include Star Wars, The Terminator, even Jurassic Park. Hans, um, if listen, Mike, listen, Spider-Man. listen, my dear, I know all about ILM. Okay, so they're like, <laughs> uh, but it, it's amazing. It even the Batman will be using ILM. Um, now, That's obviously, awesome. recent milestones include the new real-time rendering technology using ILM and Unreal. Uh, to, to make worlds around you and instead of green screen. So uh, wait, which is, the is that what they're going to do? Are they going to go to like this, a studio somewhere and then be yes. actually perform so, live and broadcast it? No, no. So so what they're doing is they're using motion, mocap, uh, yeah. motion capture suits to, to recreate their, their bodies, essentially. Okay, and yeah. they've been doing that now. Um, they're currently doing that. And then when the the concert goes live on 27 May next year, um, we will see renditions of this uh, where uh, modelers and animators can go and literally change their bodies and and basically do the Fortnite thing. Hang on. So that is so cool. It's literally video game (coughs) technology that they are using and, and movie technology which they will be using in order to create mm, um, mm. the four members of ABBA and make them dance and move in, so, in ways that they just can't anymore because of age. I just have to, just, just not to segue it, not to segue it, okay? Yeah, yeah. You know NVIDIA, right? And you know the, yeah. the, the, their CEO. I've, I've forgotten his name now. But you know how they have their keynotes where he's always in the kitchen? You know, yes. and they've made like a thing out yeah, of it. Yeah, I remember yes. that. So, so yes. do you? So, for those of you who are listening, one of the biggest revelations is how the kitchen and at certain points in the video, the CEO were not real. 
They were actually rendered in real time on the latest, I think, 3080s. Yeah. And that just a- apparently blew my mind. The last NVIDIA keynote at GES or something was yes. entirely CGI or something. Uh, we, so, But I mean, think about, just think about that for a amazing. second. So, so we're talking about ABBA, a huge, yeah. huge, huge Swedish pop group from the 80s, right? Mm-hmm. Who are making a comeback using digital technologies. So yep. much so that other graphics card companies are already using the tech to cross the uncanny valley, which is pretty much which which for the longest period of time that's kind of been the hurdle. You know, you can make things as realistic as possible, but they, there's always like there's a little twitch that doesn't move the right way, or something where you can mm. just tell that 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 isn't quite right, and that's normally to do with the human face. We've discussed yeah. this like like quite a few times, but I, look, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a huge fan of Abroad, but like we all know their music, right? Dinny, 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 dinny. Anyway, I'm not going to try it. Anyway, you know where I'm going with the kind of things. Yeah, feel good music. <laughs> it's it's weird. Yeah. But this is cool. Like like I would literally want to tune in because I'm a fan of the tech. I want. I would, I would love, love to, see to see what, what they're doing. Concert, you know. Yeah. So we'll, well obviously it, link to the the articles and also to yes. their videos. Hey, they've released two songs apparently already. Uh, two songs and many interviews. They're oh. all available on the Apple Music YouTube page. Um, oh, that's awesome! Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. So 27th of May, 2022, hey, who knows? Maybe we'll, yes. we're still doing Gettle. We'll, we'll talk about it then, you know? The, the issue, though, is that <laughs> you need to buy tickets for that show. It, oh, it won't no, be no. Some, somebody going to record it and have it up there somewhere for us to watch. Yeah, going to make like they play Fortnite <laughs> and then actually stream the whole concert or something. <laughs> yes. Exactly, uh, yeah, exactly. So. So, but, you know, like, so, again, what's cool about this? Now, I wonder now if they've re- if they've redone their contracts, because if, if anyone recalls, I think it was, it was last year sometime, we actually spoke about Robin Williams and how um, <clears throat> he had disclaimers in his will that prevented any of his likeness or voice or anything to be used in anything new, anything new, obviously past works were fine, upon his death. Now, what's interesting about what Abba's doing is I almost feel that they could continue living on forever. Like if they if their likenesses have been scanned in, and we like know digitally. because we've discussed this in the past, how AI is advancing to the point where you could generate their voices and then use deep fake technology for their faces, they could technically live on forever, infinite. This could be a setup for <laughs> their legacy. Yeah. Yes, be. exactly. Uh, that that's exactly it. I wonder what kind of contracts you'd need to set up for that. Well, like, I imagine it would be where where you would say that um you know a studio can use the likeness and voice in perpetuity with certain technologies that seem realistic however there will then have to be a royalty cost of this much forever paid into this um estate basically yeah and then th- like they could the then do whatever software. they wanted. So who knows? Maybe in the year 2040, you, you'll pick up a Coke can that's digitized and Abba sings at you while you drink your Coke. You know, and every time, every, and then every, every, every percentage of that can goes into their fund. But, but imagine though, like it, it would essentially in a way secure wealth for their family for generations to come. Yes. Yeah. You know, assume of that's course Abba remains relevant, you know, but, but I mean, and they do that. Yeah. Oh, you, you know, I, I don't want. I don't want to segue it. I don't want to segue it. But like, this makes me think so much of Britney Spears, and how of all the people who would do this, her father would. Her father yep. would would take her likeness and digitize it, and then, um, you know, make it so that and he, he because the, the, it recently came out that he's asking for two million dollars to step down. So like, I know we spoke about Britney just just the other episode. But I just had to bring it in because he's such an asshole. It is. You know? That that just goes to show that everything It proves that everything she said was was legit. Because if exactly. he really cared, why is he asking for a payout to step down for the benefit of his daughter? It doesn't make sense. Exactly. Mm-mm. <sighs> yep. Okay. So... <laughs> Um, what, a, what a downer uh, yeah sorry so I, there is other content here um but rather unfortunately i am running out of time um i have a strict schedule that i have to oh, stick to yeah yeah I'm it's okay don't worry time. it's all right don't worry it's all right it's all right um i'm helping my mom with her dialysis because she's unfortunately too weak to do it herself so i 
I, I would love to continue talking about how apparently the sun gets your sexy on and then how you can breathe through your butt. So stay tuned for next week's episode 73, where we will discuss both of those because they're super interesting, actually. <laughs> Breathing through um, my butt. I'm yeah, interested in no, that f- one, for so. real though. It's actually it's, it's a super fascinating topic, which I think we're gonna have a good time exploring next week. Um, okay. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a tease. Um, so <laughs> it's a short and sweet episode this week. Once again, thank you all for for tuning in and for writing wonderful mm-hmm. messages. I've seen um, you know people say we hope that your family get better and that, and I, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm sure in time it will heal well. And when that happens, Gettle will be back to our normal, regular, lengthy episodes with lots of other content. It's just that right now, um, I am struggling to just find stuff. And I'm really glad that I have Edward who's working here and, and putting stuff in. I know he's also going through some issues, which we've mentioned before. So it's just been tough for both of us. But either way, thank you for the support. We really always do appreciate it. And um, yeah, Ed. Hey, we do, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course we do. <laughs> um, the, the, so, the folks who always re- um, comment, they know we do. Yeah, um, y- y'all know who you are. Y'all know. Exactly. So with that in mind, thank you so much for tuning in to Get All 72, Season 2, Episode 30. And we look forward to seeing you all again next week. Ciao. Bye.